So I, I go to the memories, we explore them, we process the, the trauma at the time that may be buried and may be out of awareness, or, or it may be in awareness, and then I help him process it, which is breathe through it, breathe through it, breathe through the sensations. What trauma is, is actually, if it's shame or blame or abandonment or um, devastation, that's not important. What's important is in this moment, he was having sensations that were awful for him. And what I've learned in working with people, those sensations are what's important to focus on. And just forget what they mean, forget what, why you have them. They come in waves, and if you breathe through the waves, they'll crest and fall and get smaller, the waves will get smaller and smaller until there's nothing to manage. And that's how the brain heals. Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey guys, welcome back to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm your host, Chris Doris, and our guest today is a unique one. Her name is Dr. B. McKay, <clears throat> and she is a, uh, a licensed uh, psychologist. She's in Canada. She's in Vancouver, so I don't think they use the word licensed, but it's, it's like the registered they use, I think, is the same thing. Now, if you've followed my work for any period of time, you may have noticed that on occasion, I tend to get a little critical of um, conventional therapy, right? Because I used to be a licensed therapist, right? I, I was a licensed therapist. And I spent uh, a lot of time working with people on helping them fix their problems. And, um, uh, and I realized I, I, I spent too much time, meaning more time than I think was often necessary by virtue of my training. So I think most um, counseling models are outdated and they are, are most, not all, but um, a lot of counseling is a waste of time and takes too long. So when, now, now B was recommended to me by a former um, client of hers who is a current um, super friend of mine <laughs> and former Tough Talks rock star guest, Gary Mahler. And when Gary recommended that I have be on as a guest, and he said, yes, my, she's my former therapist, I instantly was like, hmm. And he said, and he went on to say, yeah, she, like, he gives her incredible props. Like, I mean, big, big time props for his um, current joy, his level. He's a badass. I and mean, he's got, an, uh, his life is purely miraculous because he creates it. But he wasn't always that way. And he, he speaks very um, amusingly, but very unapologetically, self-deprecatingly about himself, his former self. And he credits her fully for having like transformed him and having done it rapidly. And that's what got my attention. Because that, that's a, hmm. yeah, like deep transformation in a short period of time. I'm all about that. So I'm looking very forward to, oh, they're both going to be here. Okay, um, Gary has agreed. He just, I talked to him yesterday and he said, you know what, I can make time. Uh, I don't have the whole time, so I can't stay for the whole interview, but I'll, I'll come on in the beginning and like, we'll, you know, talk shop, talk story and stuff. And so he's going to like co-host for a minute and, and, and like, you know, get our, the history of their relationship. It's really wild right now. This, I, this is amazing to me. So he, he was her client, right, or patient, and years and years ago. And she fixed him because he was all jacked up. And now she is his client because he's a, he's a, like a powerful transformational coach. And, um, and he's helping her continue to kick ass and uh, working on a new book and all that. And we'll get into that stuff. So anyway, they're here. Let's not keep them waiting. Let's go find them. Where are you guys? And there they are. Found them. Dr. B. McKay and my man, Gary Mahler. Welcome back, Gary, and welcome, B. Well, thank you, Chris. Glad to be here. Yeah, so well, nice of you to invite me. Yeah, well, I've been looking it, forward it's, to 
So yeah, you guys um, watching or listening, uh, you've probably seen the, uh, the amazing interview that occurred in this very room that I'm sitting in, in the captain's quarter with Gary, one of the, one of the, the most viewed uh, Tough Talks episodes ever. <laughs> and as I mentioned in the introduction, um, these, these guys have done a lot of work together. Uh, Gary will tell the story, he tells it best. Um, that's why we invited Gary, because um, B had, do you prefer to be called Dr. McKay or B, do you have a preference? B is fine. B, B is, is fine? fine? Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Gary says that he doesn't exist without B. And I'll let him explain that. I mean, that's a powerful statement. And he, yeah. says, he says it all the time. He's like, no, you don't understand. Without B, I don't exist. And, and he's like, so I can't wait to hear this, the, the, the explanation of what that means. And now, B, you're a current client of Coach Gary. Yes, I am. Which is beautiful. So I'm going to let you guys take it from here for a minute. And, and for the audience, so you know, this is, a, this is our quasi plan. But you know what they say about making plans. Uh, we're going to have a dialogue here. Gary and B are going to talk about their history and their work. And then Gary's got to bounce. And then B and I will take it from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about your history? Gary, can you tell us about your history? So as I love to say, and I'll say it again, Gary in this present form does not exist without B. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I really do not exist. I, I don't know what I would have turned out to be at that moment in time when I was introduced to B. Okay. But I definitely would not be who I am today. I could imagine a lot more internal hurt, suffering, uncertainty, fear about who I am, fear about the future, fear about losing my relationships. Um, I think B, you said I was trapped, I was a man trapped in, as a man's body trapped in, a, or, or a four-year-old trapped inside of a man's body or something like that. Yes, a little, little boy dressed up in a man's body, trapped inside. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, that's who I was. And when I met B, it was in that office where she is currently, and I just remember coming in, and I was scared. I was frightened. What, are you, what were you afraid I was, of? I was afraid. I was afraid of what this person would judge me as. I was afraid of being seen as a fraud, being seen as in a way that I didn't want to be seen, but I knew was true. Oh, wow. Exposed, and you this, must be exposed as, as who you are inside. I didn't want to be exposed. Exterior, but the, it was who you were inside. You didn't want anybody to see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautifully put. Because I didn't really like what was there, so I put on this great persona. But as soon as I went in and I was with B, um, non-judgment, openness, a safe place to just bring all of my garbage and I didn't have to in our first meeting because it wasn't just you and me it was with someone else that was with me and in that I left that thinking oh my god I was dreading this but I actually quite like this and I want more <laughs> so can you tell us um, a little bit about the transformation right like who Gary was to who Gary now is as a consequence of the work. And then, and then if, if it's cool, can you describe for the audience, like what was the work? Uh, both of you maybe should you know, speak to that. What, like, kind of, what is the work? What kind of work is it that we're talking about you, that you do be and that, that transformed you so profoundly, Gary? Yeah, I'll let you start and then I'll chime in after you. You can, and you're, you're welcome to say anything and everything about what you saw. So don't hold back. That's really cool, by the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I, what the work is, is to be with the person engaged with. So I engaged with Gary and, and both of them 
I mean, uh, right in the moment. And then I, um, I, I ask each of them to, you know, I ask people to pay attention to the sensations in their body as they're talking. And I say, there's no right or wrong. There's just, you know, if you're having sensations, you, you stay with them, you feel them and you breathe through them. So as you know, as he's talking, this is what I do. And I notice what he's saying and we, I respond to him, but I'm working to keep him out of his left brain where he analyzes and scares himself into his right brain, which is the experiencing brain and the right brain, the limbic system and the body as a sensory data. So I'm working to keep him in that mode of getting into the right brain, his experience. And then I ask him about the sensations as he's talking about whatever he's talking about. I ask him on what do you sense as you feel that? And, and that is bringing him to his awareness, the sensations. Sensations are often very hard to articulate in words and you don't need to articulate in the, in words, but Sometimes in order to guide uh, the client, I need to know what's going on. And so I use whatever their words are to give me a sense of what they are experiencing. And from that information, then I know where to go and what, you know, where else to go. Um, so that's my major focus. Um, I also work with memories. Like often uh, what's happening and why people are little people dressed up in adults' bodies is there's often trauma in early years and so memories will pop up and when the memories come up they are relevant to today this moment otherwise they wouldn't have come to the surface so i remember the the memory of um gary you on your bike and 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 how frozen you were and and you know the it's like, I think you're around age eight or something like that. And he was just frozen in terror. So I, I go to the memories, we explore them, we process the, the trauma at the time that may be buried and maybe out of awareness, or, or it may be in awareness. And then I help him process it, which is breathe through it, breathe through it, breathe through the sensations. What trauma is, is actually if it's shame or blame or abandonment or um, devastation, that's not important. What's important is in this moment, he was having sensations that were awful for him. And what I've learned in working with people, those sensations are what's important to focus on. And just forget what they mean, forget what, why you have them. They come in waves and if you breathe through the waves, They'll crest and fall and get smaller. The waves will get smaller and smaller until there's nothing to manage. And that's how the brain heals. So what I'm doing with, uh, what I did with Gary is help him access the sensory data, which he was, which was, you know, he was uncomfortable. And what, what we do when anybody does, we don't want to feel uncomfortable sensations. So we try and avoid them. Often in trying to avoid them, we actually behave in ways that cause them to create create them so okay. i helped him to process the sensory data with the the logical data of the you know the the memory and what happens when you breathe through them they the the data logical data and sensory data synthesize and create new neural pathways wow. and that's wow. how you get the difference that's the transformation what we usually do is we feel something we, oh my God, I'm feeling something. We tend to breathe shallow, go into our left brain. Now, why am I feeling this? Should I be feeling this? Who, you know, and we, we chatter in our left brain about why, what, how, who, where, but it's not, that is, that's not helpful. It's not productive. So I keep bringing the person back to mm. what is. What is, is you're feeling these sensations. When you stand there and on your bike and looking at those boys, what are you experiencing? That, that stay with that, breathe through it. And then he, tells me as you know as best you can articulate sensations which is sometimes very hard uh, he and then I take what he says and I'll say stay with that stay with that and then and then they naturally shift and change because as he creates new neural pathways and then okay where did you go with that and then I track him in terms of where his mind is going and what sensations he has and it's that micro tracking that is important
<clears throat> Gary, I want to get back to you in a minute on like the, I really do want to hear who were you and now who are you right as a result of and you I'm you also would like to hear what occurred for me in that session because that was one of our first sessions together and this is remember I said with Dr. B it doesn't take like years yes, to get to the heart of something right and that's, that's a huge point that I want to talk about oh my gosh because okay. in that session I think that was the <clears throat> second time I saw her that's when I decided to see her alone I think that alone, came up right? in I was alone yes mm -hmm. it was the it was my real first session alone with you and I remember when that happened and I'll share what occurred for me yeah. during that which broke open everything I am a huge fan of rapid profound transformation Mm -hmm. I am of the belief that it is entirely possible to have profound transformation in a short period of time. And I think that we would all prefer that. Yes, absolutely. We <laughs> want to say, no, I'll, I'll take the slow route. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> all right, so when Gary told me that the other day, when we were in preparation for this, that really had my ears perk. Uh, I want to get back to, I don't know which to go to right now because there's a lot I want to talk about with B though. I want to, I want to, I would love for you to talk a little bit about the approach that you take. Like the, the, is it Gestalt? Are you a Gestalt therapist? I am a Gestalt therapist and I also uh, uh, integrate Adlerian uh, therapy. Indi it's called individual psychology. For, uh, by, uh, I, I incorporate a lot of his constructs in, but the yeah. Gestalt is the experiential component that is so powerful. Okay, and I want to learn about that, and then I, and then I want to get back to. So let's do, let's go there. Let's talk about what is Gestalt, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, I also noticed from your website that you are trained in EMDR. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to use any EMDR with Gary? Uh, no, not at that time. When I was working with Gary, it hadn't even been invented yet. So. Oh, right. well, then that would have been tough to do. <laughs> yes, but I did the same things though. I mean, I don't, EMDR is, is just a way of uh, processing. I did that with Gary, but it wasn't called EMDR at the okay. time. This, for those who are listening, EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. Right. Can you, can you translate what that, I remember reading about it when it very first came out and it was like people were using like pencils and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, okay. Maybe we'll get back to the NDR. Uh, but tell us about Gestalt therapy. What is that? What does the word Gestalt mean? Why is it called Gestalt therapy? What is it like the like in a concise as concise a way as you can? How could you help the audience even know what that means? That what is this Gestalt and what is the approach? Mm -hmm. Gestalt is a way of being uh, with the uh, it for oneself in the moment, and with awareness is the key. Now, awareness is the same as mindfulness, like. What are you aware of right now? So awareness is, uh, is the, the key to change. And so it's a sensory going along with the theories of, of Gestalt, of, of how one is. And then uh, it's the integration, because the word Gestalt means whole, coming together and integrating the whole. So Gestalt therapy is about helping the client integrate and synthesize and and consolidate all aspects of him or herself into an into, into a, who they are already capable of becoming and who are programmed to pretend you know to potentially become so making them aware helping them grow and uh, integrating all aspects of the client of the personhood so Gary let's go back to that first or if it was the first or second session yeah was it the first or second one it was the first one um, alone. So I'll, I'll come clean. Yeah, I'll come clean. It was my ex-wife that brought us to CB and we were gonna work on our marriage. Okay. And somehow during the session, she didn't like me and I asked why not? And she goes, cause she's taking your side. And I said, I don't really see that. I think she was quite impartial, but okay. Um, yeah, we, we won't do couples therapy together, but I'm going to CB. And oddly enough, we never went That's to couple therapy, therapy after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in essence, my ex-wife at the time brought me to B. Yeah, how beautiful is that? And she didn't, she didn't like B or didn't like what occurred. And I was like, man, I kind of like this because I'm feeling a lot less guilty. I'm feeling at least I'm not 100% to blame because I blame myself and I blamed her and B accepted me and we worked through stuff. So 
coming clean to your audience, that's what it is. That's why I got to know B. That's cool. That's helpful. Um, yeah. In that session, somehow it came out that when I was around seven or eight years old, I was caught by a gang. There's a notorious gang of eight boys. They were older, 12, 13. And if they caught you, they would steal money. They would beat you up. And I just remember, and you could see they were distinctive. And it's like this, I remember in the session, somehow we're talking about something, the memory came up and it's like a swarm of bees or a swarm coming and they're coming and I'm frozen. And they just grab me. They say, hey, where do you live? And I'm smart enough to know, man, I'm not saying where I live. And they're like, give me your money. And I said, I don't have any. And I'm frozen. I just think for sure these kids are going to beat me up. I don't know. And they just were laughing and they kind of pushing me around on my bike. And they say, come here tomorrow at this time and bring money. And then they let me go. And of course, I didn't go straight home. I went down, around. Like I, I just, we worked with that. So. B asked me what in terms of a level of emotion or sensation, what are you at? My fear was at a 10. Mm. I was reliving it. I was in there and B was with me and that was the work and what we did. And I believe we used the probes underneath the, the legs. So there was some probing electrical stimulation occurring. And then I would be with this and just talk through it. And through the session, we went from basically maybe a 10 out of 10 in terms of fear and emotion. We brought it down to a six. Then I think by the time it ended, we're at about a three. So this fear, this frozen, this fear of life was dictating my life up until this session. At this session, we brought it from a 10 that I didn't even know was occurring down to a three. <clears throat> Hold on. Can we back that up? Just wrong work. <clears throat> what you just said was very fascinating. You, you, but you went too fast. I don't know if I even heard it right. You said that event traumatized you and, and was affecting you through your life. And I, so, but what was the language you just used? You said it has me frozen to live or something like that. You just said he would, he would be frozen in emotionally, like there's the fight, flight, and freeze. He was in freeze mode. Oh, that's interesting. That that's I haven't heard that before. That's neat. Fight. Of course, everyone's heard fight or flight, but there's a freeze. Yes, and that is you freeze until the danger is gone. And then you either run away or, or freeze until the danger comes upon you and you f have to fight. But a lot of times young children get frozen, so adults can too, but young children have events happen, they get frozen in time and that part of them stops growing emotionally older. But the rest of it, they chronologically grow older. And so that's what we call an unhealed trauma from the past. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and often that trauma is played out in every aspect of person's life, at work, at home, in their relationships. Sometimes they know it, sometimes they don't know it. And Gary didn't, I didn't know, know it. it in time. No. And how was that manifest? It was, an, it was an undercurrent in my life. So when things would occur, that were like this, like threatening or a pending doom or something I wasn't certain about. So, you know, um, uncertain about the future of a marriage, unhappy, but un. so I would freeze. I would, and if I would go look back at my life as an undercurrent, anything big, I would freeze. If there was an impending imagined doom, I would freeze. A real doom, I would freeze. So this undercurrent within one session, we figured this came out, we worked on this and it went from an undercurrent of a 10 of being frozen to a liberation of about a three where I worked with B through this. That, that's and amazing. Then suddenly, I talk about that a little bit more, but can you just, just explain just for a tiny bit about like, what do you mean when you say I would freeze? What does that mean? Like, what would that look like? Oh, I, I would be out of action. I would not do anything. I would not say anything. I would not take action cannot think except you're in you know survival mode so you you know he asked them you know if you have any money okay he was able to say no i don't have any but he can't think he can't think to how to help himself how to get out of this he is frozen he cannot move in that moment i remember also remember you you worked for the family business so you thought you'd never had a real job i remember i said you wanted to go in and ask for a job at this place and you you fro you thought the thought of doing that was just 
horrifying or terrifying for you. Even it was a, such a small thing, a small job really, was that you couldn't even think of doing it because you were frozen. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, back so what it, how, it, how it manifested, mm -hmm. I always chose safe instead of what I wanted. Oh, oh, that's huge. That's huge. There are going to be people listening to this going, I, I, to that. I married someone, I married someone who was safe, who was probably better as a best friend. I married, I did that. I, I left living in Paris for two years because that was what I wanted to do. Came back for six months, stayed for 16 years, safe. The moment that safe appeared, yeah, I'm going to take that, even if I don't want it. Wow. And then you, then you're stifled. Then you, that part of you, mo that emotional part, cannot get any older than eight. But you said something earlier that really stood out for me, <clears throat> and what it reminded me of, and I want you to tell me if this is even close. Uh, what you, you said you were helping, or you help people. You were helping Gary stop avoiding by going into the, the. I can't remember which hemisphere. Freeze mode, the, the survival what? mode. Yeah, which side of the brain? Le left brain. He, when we're frozen, the left brain, you cannot think. If your heart rate is above 115 beats a minute or something, you cannot think rationally. So you're frozen and you, you're just trying to survive. But, right, and, 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 and the habit becomes to like avoid the pain, right? Avoid the pain, avoid, avoid the memory. The Avoid. Uh, avoid the sensations. Now we think we think and you know avoid situation, but really we don't ever want to feel that level of fear. It's a, it's a level of terror, and we don't want to feel that again. Yeah, right. That's how big it is. I mean, we're talking abject terror. I'm going to die. I'm going to cease to exist, etc. So Gary, going back, <clears throat> pardon me, going back to that first individual session of yours. Did you feel that terror? Uh, I, I completely felt that ter terror at a 10 within the safety of B's office and the safety of B being there. I could be able to be with something I didn't even, you know, I knew that event had occurred, but I hadn't thought about it in years. But in that office, it came to the surface and it overwhelmed my body. But the safety of B being with me and doing the work that we did, we were able to take certain cycles and I don't know how long it took, maybe five, 10 minutes. And then within that, I was able to breathe through what was going on, process what was going on. And then, oh, this isn't so bad. I'm not dying. I, I'm not dead. I haven't, I haven't been. Yeah. That's because, because your brain is creating new neural pathways. Now, what I see is that you wear eight years old in that moment. You were not talking about the situation. You were reliving it in the moment. So you were terrified. You were only eight years old. And I provided what I call an emotional container to hold you so you didn't have to be the adult that you usually are. You could allow yourself to fully feel that knowing that I was sort of uh, not physically holding you, but holding you and holding this emotional space for you to go there, created the safety for you to go and be eight years old. And then once you start to breathe through the sensations, you start to heal that trauma by creating new neural pathways. The logic of, yeah, of course, it shouldn't be that scary. With it is that scary, synthesize new neural pathways, you're different. You just feel different. So what is the line, what would you, so the new neural pathway is, would be, if you're going to give it a name, <clears throat> would it be like, I'm safe? Would well, it, it, could, it could transform, like safety is a non-issue. I, I that would, I would have, I would call it, I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. Because the fear is always that these boys are going to annihilate me. I'm somehow going to get annihilated. And so that moment of annihilation, annihil not being annihilized is what you don't ever want to experience again. And you would go there. If you're only eight years old and you're in an adult world, it's pretty hard to not go there and being expected to do adult things and be in, and, you know, behave in adult ways. So you would go to that sort of default place. But once you have the new neural pathways, that part of you can get emotionally older 
And once it gets older, you can grow up and eventually that part, obviously you're now fully chronologically and emotionally, you're the same age. Mm -hmm. And that makes life so much easier. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's gotta be a total understatement. Um, Gary, I know that you have to get going soon, but before you do, you have an appointment. Um, could you talk a little bit about the question that, that I threw out uh, back towards the beginning? of the conversation, which is who are you now in contrast to the person that you were before you started working with B? Um, before I started working with B, um, I was trapped in fear. Looking good was the most important thing in my life. And I would prefer that to actually feeling good or feeling at home. Remember in the last one I said, I'm at home wherever I was. Mm. Well, before meeting B, I was never at home anywhere I was. Didn't matter. Because because that's that's so awesome. Because well, be that you should feel very proud to hear that. Um, because when he sat here in this very office, that is this the sentence that stood out. In fact, I think I entitled the, the the conversation that. Right, I am wherever I am. What is it? Say it again. I'm at home. I'm a local. I'm a local. Oh, yeah. I'm at home everywhere I am. Before I met B, I was never at home anywhere I was. I was always in a state of dis-ease or not feeling at ease with anyone or anybody. And the pain was so great, it stifled my whole life. And you so can't... I work... Yeah, you can't get close to someone when you're afraid of being exposed because if, they, if you let them get too close, they would know, they would find out. And so you were lonely too because you were keeping, even though you were married at the time you first came, you were very lonely in that marriage because you couldn't allow yourself to be close uh, in a genuine congruent way. But now it's like you're congruent through and through and fun and playful and safe and yes. Him. <laughs> Courageous. Oh my God. Uh, I am, I am free. So I, I worked with beef over four periods and I don't know the length each time, but it wasn't like a lot of months. If it was months, it was a couple, maybe three. So the first time that I worked with B was all of similar things to this, like emotional scarring or things. We worked on those. And then we took care of that. Then there was another period where I worked with her to unravel a marriage. And then I worked with B to unravel not taking over my family business. So this is over a period of years. So we work on something and then I take in a very short period of time, the work with B, the tools that I've got. And then I start living life like I've never lived before. Maybe I lived when I was in my twenties in Paris, freedom from everything. I was living that. And then in that, a new set of circumstances occurred externally that I stepped into. And then I was like, I can't be in this marriage. Can you help me? And she helped me. And she helped me through the separation and what that meant for my life. And then I did all these things. Then from there, I don't want to be in the family business. I don't want to buy it out. I don't want to be in debt millions of dollars and do this nonsense. He helped me to navigate that. Then in the process of that, through being free, I fell in love with my current wife and we had a breakup because we couldn't do long distance. And I went to see B and B helped me. Without B, I don't have this life I have because the woman, Kanako, my wife, did not ever want to be with me again. And I remember working with B, I was crying, I was distraught. And then B had the brilliant idea. This is where B with me, it turned really, she was my coach without even knowing that coaching existed. I didn't, but she, I remember being with her and she said, you're creative, create an invitation. I did. I sent a package with a friend to Japan. It, it took six weeks through going to Japan, coming back, going to mail for, my, for Kanako to receive what B asked me to create. She said, you create something. That invitation had her say yes to come back to spend 10 days together, which allowed me to say, I don't want to be apart from you. I'm going to make it my goal. I'm going to make it my desire. I'm going to make it that I'm moving to Tokyo. So from someone who didn't want to be with me, we lived in Tokyo for two years. 
So in different areas. So within each step of augmentation, within a short period of time, I grew like the Grinch, his heart grew 10 times bigger. That's why I say without B, I don't have any of this. Wow. That's quite a testimonial, B. Wow, that was so powerful. She just I lost it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that to me? Just make me disappear. So listen, I know you got to bounce, brother. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to, to co-host and show up today and make time in the middle of your day. Oh, I, can I just say one more thing? Yes. To, 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 to two things. To the people who are listening, um, B's got a couple of books coming out. Um, B writes prolifically. Anything that you can get your hands on from B, that's an extension. B is that powerful in the written word, or if you need anything, reach out to B, because I kid you not, this woman is a gift from God. Like there is something about how B is that is that powerful. That's why I thought it would be imperative for her to be on Tough Talks. Good call, man. Because I just, man. Yeah, we'll definitely and then to, before we hang up, for sure. And then to be, while you're here, B, I always acknowledge you, but thank you so much for being in my life and being love to me, being um, without judgment with me and giving me my life back. Gary, I want to say to you that, you know, when you tell me, your story of coming into yourself and it's so fun to hear it because it's what I've always wanted to do really help people and uh, and it's fun to make people blossom people who you know are stunted in their emotional growth and have them come into their own and then watch what they do in life and how they re take care and take charge of their life in a whole new way I'm just really honored to work with you and and it's not work it's fun I really enjoy doing this i enjoyed working with you and still enjoy working with you even though it's the shoes on the other foot now which is which yeah. is i think is really amazing and that's pretty cool right i would like to tell that story how i came to work with gary i would love to hear that story. well and before you know, we do what i'm mm -hmm. gonna do though is i'm gonna hop off like we said okay um yeah i'm gonna go to my next um Enjoy that, Thank man. Enjoy that. I will. I and, love. I know uh, you have coming up. I know how much you love us. So I have an amazing time. B, it was amazing to spend time with you, Chris. It's always amazing to spend time with you. Thanks, I'm sir. looking forward to watching this, and especially the next part. I'm going to fast forward right to that. <laughs> Bye, B. Bye, Gary. Hey, brother. Good to see you guys. Good see you. Oh, wow. I love that oh, so much. <laughs> he's an amazing person, isn't he? I always feel lighter when I hang with him, even virtually, you know? Yeah, yes, yeah. You know, of course you know. So, yeah, please do tell that story, B. Well, so I worked with Gary and, you know, you know, and lots of other people and on and off with him, but, and we hadn't seen each other for years, right? Mm -hmm. And then he calls me out of the blue and says, would you like to have dinner with me? So it's the amount, you know, we're not allowed to socialize with our psychologists and not allowed to socialize with our clients, but patients. Are, but um, it, after two years, it's not a problem. But it had been many years. I don't know how many, but it had been quite a few years. So I went and have dinner with him. And I had, um, when I arrived, you know, he says, how are you? And I said, oh, I'm fine. But I, you know, I wasn't fine. I was, um, uh, I just said I was fine because that's what you say. So about, about an hour <laughs> right. into dinner. Uh -huh. By the way, wait, 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 real quick, just one quick, sorry to interrupt, clarification mm -hmm. question. Do you happen to remember what you had for dinner? Uh, it, was, it was Japanese, my favorite. I was waiting for sushi, you see. We will get back to that. <laughs> um, that was on purpose. All right, we're going to get back to that. Uh, I didn't even put that one together. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I got you. Yep. Um, so I, about an hour into our, the dinner, we're just catching up with each other, right? I said to him, and I said, you know, I said I was okay when I, we met, but I, I'm not okay. I said, I've been in a funk. I said, since I turned 70, I have been, and that was six months ago, I've been in a funk, a kind of depression. And so we talked about that and I explained that, you know, I thought if I haven't made it by now, I'm, I, I'm, it's too late, it's done, right? And um, 
so I'm in a funk and about that. And it wasn't true because I've all I'd already made it. I already had a, a PhD by then. I already had written a book. I already had done work with a lot of clients. So I'd already made it really. And so now I was supposed to retire and do what? Anyway, I don't know what Gary said to me. I have no I could no idea what our conversation was but i do remember clearly when i walked out of that restaurant i put up my umbrella and said i can dream again and guess what i started writing my book oh my gosh wait which book you've got you have the one the one that we're talking about the let things fall together one so he's instrumental and he helped and that was just several months ago that was five years ago Oh, 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 wait a minute. I'm so confused. You, the dinner that you had. Yes, it was uh, many, many years ago. Okay. When did you start working with him? Uh, before I'm that, sorry, when it, did you, when, that's so confusing. I need to be more specific. And he's, when did he start coaching you? Well, it was years before that. I've lost track of the time frame, but he had come years before that. Gotcha. And so, it was years since he quit, right? Before mm-hmm. we had this dinner. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's talk about that, that book. And this book is coming out. At the time of this recording, mm-hmm. the book has been sent to publisher, right? Yes. You, but you have mm-hmm. another book out already. That yes. is available on Amazon. But it's not for the public, general public. It was for therapists on how to work with clients who are conflicted and within themselves. So the one that the two you work how to work with the self in conflict. That's, that's that was for, published in 2011. That was my first book. You're right. Mm-hmm. And that's well, it's still available, right? And that's for therapists to learn techniques. Yes. 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 And mm-hmm. specifically to learn the two chair gestalt approach. Yes. Specifically the two chair gestalt technique is extremely powerful. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing it for many, many years. And, and, and there are therapists who are, who, and coaches who use it and don't know what they're doing. And you can cut to the chase with a person's to their core so quickly with two chair work. And then people, therapists don't know what to do with that. So I, I wrote okay. the book because I, I was concerned that people need to know how to do this technique, uh, you know, ethically and, and responsibly and, and just how to do it. And I figured out how to do it in a way that simplified it. And, I think that's my, um, wow. my, my, my forte is I can simplify things. I can take something you know, really complicated and I can say it simply. So I've been able to do that all of my career. That's one of my favorite things in life. So I love that about you. So, so, all right. So I will definitely put a link in the show notes here to the mm-hmm. Amazon page for that book. So that book is specifically, it's a how-to book for therapists. Yes. To learn the, the Gestalt two chair. Yeah. In a, a, could you, is there a concise way of answering the question? Why is it called two chair? Well, the title of the book, I changed the title because when I was writing it, I, I said, one, you know, I, said, I kept saying, it's not about the chairs. It's not about the chairs. It's not about the chairs. Why do they keep talking about chairs? And so I, I, one morning I woke up from a dream and, and, I, and the dream said, call it to you work. And I, to you work. To you. T-W-O, to you work. Yeah. And I laughed. I thought it was a great joke and I dismissed it. But, you know, as I kept writing, yes, it's about the two aspects of you. It's nothing to do with the chairs. And the then that's not the thing where people go wrong with this technique is because they think it's about that they get stuck with the chairs. So, so do you actually still use two chairs? Do you have your clients get up and go sit in a different chair? Absolutely. Okay. So that's fundamental part. So that's still, okay. All right, mm-hmm. gotcha. So, 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 what is um, if you were just going to inform someone, like give them like uh, just a, a very rudimentary explanation of like uh, what is this? What is the symbolism of the two chairs, and what is the intent of this approach to healing? This, the, it's a, two parts of you. We are we are born a living, breathing creature on this planet. Trying, we got dropped here with no choice of our own, and and we are trying to, and once we're here, though, we try to want to survive as best we can. So we're a living, breathing creature. That's part of us. Then we have this thinking self. Now, 
no other living thing that can think about itself, but we can for good or evil, but anyway, we can think about ourselves and that part can, is the other part of us. And it's the quality of interaction between the two parts that is key. Because if we treat ourselves well, our energy is aligned, our, 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 our self esteem goes up and we can handle life. If we treat ourselves badly, our energy is opposed. And that means it's not that we don't have energy, it's just busy and not available to use to live life. Mm. Our self esteem goes down. So there's a, with this COVID thing, I say there's a lot of things in this world and this earth you can't control. But one thing you can control is your relationship with yourself. You can change your relationship with yourself. It is not easy, but you can. We all develop a way of being, like we're, we're coming to this world, we're not born with problems and ways of being, we, we develop them, we are shaped by our families of origin, our culture, our experiences, and then we make meaning out of those. And what I've learned, and I didn't learn this till later, you know, one of the best feedback I have had on my work was from a doctor who referred patient, her patients to me, and she says, I'm confused, she says, you know, I send a lot of my patients for therapy and when they come back the next time I see them uh, I ask them how it was and most of the time they say it was good it was good to talk to someone she says but when I send them to you they don't say anything they they say they just go about the making changes that they needed to make and I and she says and they don't mention you and I said well that's perfect I that that's perfect I said, as long as you know to the that yes, I had a right, right. <laughs> to your right. to me. That, that's but, perfect yeah so you see, however, and I didn't know I was doing anything. I, I, I knew I was, from that I knew I was doing something different from other therapists, but I didn't know what it was. But over time, what I found out is it's the sensations that we really are managing. It's not the fears. It's not the, the shame. It's, not, it's the sensations of it. Because, you know, I grew up in a family of four kids. My family, were far, my parents are farmers and are the youngest of four and and um, and I often ha had you know was left with my siblings to look after me who didn't want to look after me oh. so there's a lot of rejection oh. there I wanted to be with them so much I didn't care if I was rejected I didn't care and I just kept going well so for me rejections are no deal because I got lots of neural pathways for handling it but for someone else re rejection can be devastating so it's the sensations, it's not the meaning, it's the sensations that we are trying to get or avoid. Yeah. So when you think of someone who's um, afraid of conflict, lots of people are afraid of conflict. So they will agree to do things they don't want to do, they will yes. say yes when they don't, and, and trying to avoid conflict. But in doing so, you can't pin them down. They're not really being themselves and the other person who's trying to connect with them can't. So they keep, and guess what? They got a conflict, they got a fight because this person wants them to you know, be more real. And it, so therefore, they had the, they create, by, behave, by be fearing the sensations of conflict, they actually behave in ways that create the sensations in the, that they didn't want. I, did, I think it's so perfect that your name is B. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you change your name or does that just really work out that perfectly? <laughs> no. Uh, it, your name is B at first. My eldest name, my legal name is Betty and I've never liked the name, but my legal name is not Elizabeth. Betty is a derivative for Elizabeth. My legal name is Betty and I never liked it. I, I, uh, there was always a Veronica around somewhere. I don't know if you read Archie comments, but you know. Yeah, of course, I sure did. Yeah. So anyway, and so anyway, when my eldest niece was born, or when she was one and a half or two, she was learning to talk, and she couldn't say Auntie Betty. It came out Auntie B, and I liked it. So. Oh, that's great! And you I, went with it. And I it's, love it's it. And I even my uh, website's called B in Balance. B E A in Balance. Yes. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> There's lots of ways to play with that. B E A, and I'll put that all that in the show notes. B E A and balance. The reason, by the way, everyone that's listening or watching, that I interrupted B when I asked her, "Do you remember what you had for dinner when you went to that uh, auspicious dinner with with Gary Mahler?" is because well, I knew 
what they had for dinner. <laughs> and your um, personal email, is it okay for me to share your personal email yes. with the world? Is uh, waiting for sushi at gmail.com. <laughs> I love that. And, and you know what I do for my passwords is I, I have trouble remembering them, so I make you know, a string of words. Don't, I okay, well, all right, well, we won't go there. <laughs> but that's how I make my pass, because you can remember it, right? It's easy to that's remember. Perfect. Waiting for sushi at gmail.com. So uh, let's, let's finish up by, I, want, I would love for you to, let's talk for a minute about your current book, the book that's coming out. So, so do you have any uh, estimate of, what, so obviously this is being recorded, but this, is gonna, this, is, this recording is going to stay out there, and I will republish mm -hmm. this. So this will, this okay. will be out there when, when the book is complete. Do you have, is the title confirmed? No, because I don't have a publisher yet. But right now, a publisher in London, England has invited me to submit my full manuscript. I've done that and they said they have it and they'll let me know in two weeks. So I am very hopeful that okay. they will. So then how, how would someone right now, the working title, the working title yes. is we'll Let Things Fall Together. Yes. Is there a subtitle? Yes, how to stop managing your emotions and start processing this processing them oh that's fascinating oh wow and when I'll, you stop let, let's say the whole thing let me say the whole thing again okay, okay. all right okay. so the, currently and this could change but currently the working title is let things fall together subtitle how to stop managing your emotions and how to process them or start shift processing. from managing to processing right so there's nothing to manage if you process your emotions there's nothing to manage you know Earlier in the conversation, I started a sentence and I, I just went off on some tangent, but I'm back at it because you're reminding me of it again. Your subtitle is totally reminded me of it. I did some work in India. And one of the things, I, one of the biggest takeaways that I, that I had from that experience, which was at a place called the Oneness University, mm -hmm. uh, was well, this phrase. This is a beautiful mantra. And I want to hear your response to it. Everything, when experienced fully, becomes joy. Have you ever yes. heard that? No, I haven't, but it's, it's uh, said because you feel fully alive. Like a lot of us are going around numb and only if we're avoiding feeling sensations, our, our lives are lived here. When you are not afraid of the sensations, you can have the worst sensations, you know, to breathe through them, you will survive it. And that means you can experience anything to the fullest and you feel ah, fully alive. Nothing needs and, to be avoided. You know, it makes life so much more worth living. So you can simply be. Yes. <laughs> well, if now, uh, I, I want to say how do I came to that title, let things fall together. I find mm -hmm. let go of the outcome, things, you know, because a lot of people are trying to control the outcome. Okay. And again, I say the sensations of the outcome because it's, you know, failure, whatever their failure is, there'll be awful sensations. And what, you know, one person's failure is another person's you know, neutral. Uh, so it, it, it can't be the same. They don't have the same sensation. So if when you process the sensations you have, things can fall, you behave in ways that you want to behave. Mm -hmm. And things can fall together or come together in ways you can't make happen. So it's, I, you know, I created that phrase. And it's a paradoxical phrase that I use. And I, and I kept saying, well, I wonder how did that fall we, like with a client? We do things together and sometimes I don't even realize what I'm doing anymore. It just seems like magic, but I know I, I, I somehow created, but I say, well, how did that fall together? We would never have dreamt of that answer, you know? And that's the fun of the work. I don't know what's going to happen. I never know when I enter and we'll start working with someone, we work in the moment and seeing what comes out of it is the fun of it. You know, there's a research that was done with, I used to work exclusively with golfers and I still do work with golfers, just not exclusively. And I used to study a lot of the research on the mental game. And uh, there was this research study involving putting and the, there was two groups <clears throat> two, uh, and the first group, the instruction was make this putt, make these putts, make them. And then they measured their results. And, and this is such a simple study. The next, the, the second group was given a different instruction let these putts go in and they made a ton more <laughs> let things fall together let, that's, let yep. things fall together or, 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 or 
For the golfers out there listening, just let the putt drop. Yeah. <laughs> That's so beautiful. All right, so just to wrap that up, though, um, since the book's not out, now let's see. where. Let's send folks to your website, right? Because the book, when it is out, of course it's going to be on your website, right? Of course. Which, mm -hmm. which is, uh, for those of you listening to the podcast, if you're out walking, you don't have a pen, it's um, B in balance.com, but it's spelled the way B's name, first name is spelled B-E-A in balance.com. And that's where they, that's, that, is that the best place for people to find you? Yes. You? Mm -hmm. Well, they've got your email address too now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're yes. Waiting Everybody for knows my email. I'm going to be getting a lot more emails. <laughs> waiting for sushi at gmail.com. B, I just want to thank you so much for making time today and for um this is the first time i've had uh two guests or as or we'll say a a co-host gary and and a special guest so thank you for playing along with that and thank you for making time and sharing your beauty your love and your wisdom with my tough talks tribe well it's been my pleasure and i just want to say how much fun life is and this is part of my new career is having interviews like this and yeah. doing things like this. Oh, beautiful. I have never been as happy and as uh, joyful as I am at this time of my life. That is just so beautiful here. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, B. Thank okay. Mm. Feeling like, <clears throat> I'm feeling like I want to have another uh, Tough Talks interview with B. Because uh, this is interesting, I, you know, I don't know, you may or may not um, be familiar if you've seen any of my episodes before, no, nah, not in Tough Talks, but if you, if you follow my blogs and you probably, or, or my Daily Dose, you probably have heard me ridicule counseling. I used to be a licensed therapist. And I, I shifted into coaching primarily because I believe that... Uh, Therapy takes too long to create profound awesomeness. <laughs> and, and another reason, a big part of it was I just didn't want to work with people on fixing problems. I want to work with them on creating um, amazing futures, right? Uh, but I'm fascinated with her, and she offered to do some work. So I, I want to do that. We're going we're gonna to do that. So look forward to that. That was pretty awesome. And thanks again to Gary Mahler for, uh, for making time to really warm it up and in introduce her to you guys and to me. All right. And as always, you know, if you're not getting um, notifications, if you're not on my list, then that's a significant problem. That is, the, that is a, that is the exception to the rule, the mantra, there are no problems, right? In the world, the only problem is the way I look at it. Well, actually there is one exception. If you're not on my list, that's like the problem. So let's fix that by going to ChristopherDoris.com backslash lists, L-I-S-T-S. -S. All right. Until next time, folks, great miracles. Peace.